Hi, this is a presentation for the phase array inspection uh, development for composites on the pie joints of aerospace components. We're going to go over the known challenges of the application, what our key goals are, and that some of the approaches that we've taken, and then to show some scan data off of the foot and the vertical sections of the pie joints. The known challenges of the application. So we have the web laminate with your adhesive film bonded to the overwraps and the pie form and then the lamination to the foot laminate. So we have the inspection of the bond lines of the film adhesives across all sides of the pie joint form. So some of the difficulties in this inspection is the non-parallel surfaces of the component. On here is illustrated to show that you have to get full coverage of the bottom laminate section we have a parallel surface to the pie joint and then it goes to a tapered section down the length of the foot and the issue that you have here is that now you are no longer perpendicular to the ID surface at your entry point and variable water path throughout the inspection causing some difficulties in gating uh, your signals of the top surface entry and gating the back wall surface that you're monitoring for the bonding. So the key goals that we had on the application is we had a sample set in with some uh, defects about a quarter inch in size on both the legs of the pie joint and the vertical of the pie joint. We were looking at doing an inspection to allow us to use a low volume coupling and that uh, so we were not in an immersion tank and also investigate uh, some different coupling solutions between contact and uh, immersion and bubbler systems. So the first approach we started with, um, we had some dual arrays and linear arrays that we were going to use in contact with a adapted face to be able to match up to the contour. Um, we wanted to start out with this direction and do an emergence testing in order to verify that we had some baseline data uh, of what current scans look like uh, with the, in a uh, immersion setup and then see how we could approve upon that. So we started out with a bubbler system to baseline that inspection, a linear phased array with the variable water path doing a zero degree scan across the base laminate to determine if we could see how well the defects came in in that position. So this is the data that we received, we collected and that doing that scan as shown in the picture to the left the top C scan image and B scan image is of the as collected data. So then now we have the top surface on the far left hand of the B scan with the gated back wall in the uh, below that in the bottom section which we're trying to monitor. So you can see with the current gates that we had set up and that we were only able to find two of the defects. Um, clearly in the as collected data. We then post process that data by adjusting the gates and adjusting the gate on the instrument to get the best images that we could get in post analysis process which is the image below showing um, that we were able to see many more of the defects but it's still and that has some uh, saturated areas in red and under inspected areas in the white uh, 
light blue on the top section. So now we came up with, the, off of that scan, we came in looking at that geometry was our biggest hurdle on this inspection. So, and that this is basically a, a risk image of the B scan of that linear scan showing how that front surface geometry and back surface geometry didn't allow us to set up gates in a horizontal position that would allow you to gate that back wall and that precisely enough without having some noise from the front wall echo uh, getting into the gated area which caused issues for detection. So what we did was, and I, we went in knowing what that water path was for each one of the shots that we were using in the virtual probe. And we went in and manually adjusted the delays of each one of the individual beams for each shot down the length of the scan to adjust for that varying water path that we knew we had. And by doing so, that may allow us to change the image on the left to the image here in the center with the overlay of what the composite, what the uh, pie joint image should look like. So you can see now we have a tapered interface echo, which corresponds with what the delays are actually for each shot. And the back wall of that section of the pie joint is a nice straight line now to be able to gate that section and that section only to get a much better uh, image result in your scan pattern. So with those corrected uh, delay laws uh, altering the time of flight, we have the image here showing the as collected data on top and that with the gates assigned clearly indicating all the defects through the uh, pie joint and then the bottom section is the post process data where we went ahead and manually adjusted the data uh, with the instrument with gain settings and basically showed uh, the same data in the post analysis as the acquisition data. So we feel as though that this new process to do the scanning is going to allow you to do your uh, pie joint analysis and at, in an as scan state without needing to do any post processing after the fact to find for any defects. So once we had that information done for the foot joint, we went and did the scan on the vertical post, on the vertical side, which is almost a mirror image of the foot laminate. And as you can see, the data here was the post-processed view of the uncorrected scan of the component, which again shows that, and that we were able to see bunches a lot of the defects in the pie joint. However, we had areas of saturation and of undergain that did not clearly show up every defect. And here's the vertical data adjusted time of flight data. So you can see we have the overlay on the B scan section to the left with an overlay of what the cross joint looks like. So you can see we're able to look at the front wall echo, the interface echo bond line, and actually are able to scan through and get information from the opposite side of the vertical as well. And as in on the uh, foot pie joint section, the as acquired data and the post-process data mirror each other as far as uh, no post-processing required to find the defects off of the samples. So here's 
a more clear image of the vertical laminate. So we have the uncorrected time of flight on the left showing the variable water path to the ID of the surface and the back wall echo that we were trying to gate out. And then the middle section shows the overlay uh, onto the corrected time of flight data. And then the image to the right is the same data but without the overlay shown on it so you can get a nice image and see clearly uh, where we're gating that bond line interface at. We can get a nice tight uh, gated echo, a gated response off of that to get very good results of the bond line um, amplitude. And then one of the other th options we did with the instrument we were using was we were able to import a 3D drawing of the component and in importing the 3D geometry we were able to take the scanned, the scanned data that we had acquired during the inspection and overlay that onto the 3D image of the part. Uh, so you're able to very clearly distinguish where any defects would be located in the position that they are located in for sizing and uh, repairability. So conclusions and our next steps on this project are and that we definitely feel that we've been able to set up a scan that will not require any post-processing. Um, we'll be able to do a live scan and analysis uh, during that inspection. All the defects have been detected uh, that we had in the sample. Uh, the problems with the current scan plan is that right now uh, the instruments that we were using did not seem to have the functionality to be able to automatically calculate the delays needed to get a perpendicular uh, or to get a flat response that we needed off of the back wall echo. So uh, we're going to be in, in contact with a couple manufacturers to see if there are some features in their instrument software and or they would be willing to do some modifications to that to help automate that process uh, to be able to calibrate that, in, that into the instrument to be able to normalize the time of flight based on the uh, back wall echo instead of the front wall echo. We are also going to now start to review alternative methods instead of using the immersion technique, um, either it be it by a water column uh, with a membrane on the front or maybe a conformable delay material. Um, those are some of the next uh, steps in the process in order to make it a more um, and do a more better inspection without requiring the amount of water for, in that bubbler system would require. So if you have any questions um, or if you'd like to discuss more please go to our website or give us a call. Um, we're at Sensor Networks in State College, Pennsylvania and we'd be happy to hear from you.